In this episode, we talk with the Belfont Historical Railroad Society about Center County's rich railroad history and ways that folks can enjoy and experience it. We feature remnants of railroad history around the county and explore former tunnels and trails left behind by the railroads that threaded through central PA. Welcome to Hidden Happy Valley. We're at the Coburn Tunnel, also known as the Beaver Dam Tunnel, between Coburn, PA, and Ingleby. So to the east is Popaddy State Park, where you can also explore the Popaddy Tunnel using the Penns Creek Rail Trail. Time to explore. On the western side of the portal, it's about 260 feet through the mountain. The Lewisburg Center and Spruce Creek Railroad established these tunnels, which was later reorganized and renamed by the Pennsylvania Railroad as the Lewisburg to Tyrone Railroad. By 1885, the Lewisburg and Tyrone Railroad was completed between Lewisburg and Belfont. We're inside the Coburn Tunnel. Uh, it's a nice little draft in here. We're right in the middle, 260 foot tunnel, hand carved in the late 1800s. So yeah, you can see the stonework there. Imagine that steam engine coming through here. There's actually, it looks small on the outside, but when you get in here, you can see, okay, a locomotive can fit through here. So just a little bit about Center County's railroad history in general. The first railroad in Center County was the Belfont's Snowshoe Railroad, which was established in 1859 to get coal off the mountaintop area. So this is the l &T Railroad. And just to name a few other railroads in Center County, you have the Belfont Snowshoe Railroad. By the 1860s, you have the Bald Eagle Valley Railroad. You have the Beach Creek Railroad. Uh, you have the Clearfield to Tyrone Railroad, which went through Phillipsburg. You have all these little railroads like the Nittany Valley Railroad or the Belfont Central Railroad. And eventually you have big companies like the Pennsylvania Railroad taking over and operating these and controlling these. You can explore history too. Join me as I speak to the Belfont Historical Railroad Society to learn more. We might even take a ride on a speeder car to experience one of our still active railroads. Um, and then of course there was the uh, Pennsylvania Railroad, which came in, uh, into town here and then continued on eventually through what that book has written about, the LMT. They started building from Lewisburg towards uh, Tyrone. When they got more or less to Lamont, they decided that they already had track that went to Tyrone and it was not in their best interest to build out to connect those two through State College because at that time there was nothing in State College mm -hmm. of significance. So they turned the corner and came up to Belfont and connected here. Um, so they had built both directions. They had built out from Tyrone to Fairbrook and served the mines at Scotia mm -hmm. from there. And when they got to Lamont, they decided to come across the, this direction, come up Spring Creek and got to a Y and split with one track going out towards uh, State College in downtown uh, across that iron bridge. And the other track uh, went the other way down towards Fairbrook. They had discontinued a general passenger yeah. service around 1954, yeah. 1956. So before but, that, you could go to a Penn State football game on a train from, Mel from Belfont. Yes. The president of the United States yeah. actually came into State College. Okay. On a, on a special train. On his yeah. special yeah. passenger yeah. car. One great way to experience railway history is to walk along rail trails like this one. This is the old Belfont Central Railway, which ran from State College to Belfont. And today, it's just a short walk from campus up in the Arboretum. Nature. Is this it? Rail cut. Is this it? Yeah, that's it. Oh, yeah. Oh, look how straight it is. Boom. And then we have to go all the way to Belfont. We've got a bit of a hike ahead of us. Yes. Hello. Here's the corner room and the uh, Allen Street Grill, famous here at Penn State. Where we're walking right now is roughly the site of the Belfont Central Railroad station on Penn State's campus. You can see it very lightly right there. This is the gate on the corner here. Oh, nice. 
They say it took about an hour and 20 minutes to travel from Belfont to the campus, which is extremely slow. So slow, in fact, that one funny anecdote is the train passed a fisherman who was on his way back to Belfont and uh, he was carrying his day's catch. And the engineer stopped the train and shouted out to the man, you know, why don't you climb on board? I'll give you a lift back to the station. And the fisherman said, no thanks, I'm in a hurry. Join Local Historia at our other tours. Find information at our website, localhistoria.com. When do they start to kind of decline and, you know, to where, you know, there's still some running now, but not like obviously they used to. I would say with the advent of paved highways. The National Highway Act. Yeah. You started to see some decline as early as the 20s and 30s, but with the depression and the fact that their you know, airlines weren't really servicing uh, distance travel yet, um, and highways were somewhat unreliable up until the 50s, you still had a fair bit of passenger service running. And of course, World War II kept a lot of that stuff going because during the war, and the railroads were making all kinds of money because they were moving both soldiers and you know, passenger, other passengers, and all kinds of freight. So, you know, money was just rolling in, didn't matter. After World War II, um, you know, when we really started seeing a dramatic increase in interstate highways, um, there was competition from bus lines, competition from airplanes, competition from private vehicles. Train service started to see, you know, uh, a decline in interest. Throughout the United States, um, we're obligated to offer passenger service. You know, the federal government wouldn't let them shut down their passenger services. But the lines had become unprofitable and it was very expensive to run a steam locomotive uh, for a number of reasons. Um, so they were looking for ways to cut costs and these self-propelled cars were a great way to do that. They could be operated from either end. They could be chained together with a single operator. I'm at the Belfont Cruise, it's a great way to experience railroad history is by riding the speeder car rides. And, um, they're all across the country, and there's a, an organization called NARCOA, North American Rail Car Association, that um, gets the permission to ride various sections of track all across the country, even up in Canada. And you can go, and for a modest fee, you can travel hundreds of miles by yourself on the rail oh. in a convoy of these little speeders. That sounds awesome. <laughs> which is really cool. Yeah, that's that's like a real blast. Yeah. Because the scenery is there's there's no parallel to the scenery you get, and it's a it's a fraction of the cost that you would spend to ride in a in a real what we'll say is a real train. So in the old days, yes, sir. To repair the track and inspect them, they would use cars like this. Now they use the pickups with the little wheels on them. Mm -hmm. So they can get them off the track in case there's a train coming. They're much more flexible and these are these are much more fun. These were the only means of getting the crews out on the on the rails. Okay. And you might have a crew of a few people and they would have a designated car and a designated spot on the track where that car would reside. And in the morning they would get in that car and they would travel to the end of their you know designated area and they would basically by hand maintain the track. Nowadays it's all automated. But uh, that was their means of getting to and from their work site uh, back in the day. They traveled to the, the speeder parking area and then they traveled to the end of their, their designated section and took care of the track and made sure everything was in tip top shape yeah. so that the freight and passenger cars could uh, travel on the track safely. And we offer, uh, we offer uh, rides you know, during various events yeah. and uh, we're hoping to expand this and give longer rides in the future. So we are the Belfont Historical Railroad Society. We've been, uh, I think we were chartered in 1984. We consist of all volunteer members, no one's paid. We are a nonprofit 501c3 organization. Membership information is available on our website at www.belfonttrain.org. If you want to contact us via email, that would be info at belfonttrain.org. Willing to take any and all help fundraising, logistics, event coordinating. People come and go all the time, so if you have any interest at all in trains and you wanna do stuff like this, or even operate uh, full-size trains, with any luck we'll be uh, operating real trains again in the very near future. If you like this episode of Hidden Happy Valley, like and subscribe. trying to keep this history alive.
any way you can. Doing excursions, speeder cars. Yes. Um, the RDC is coming back. Anything else, or is that pretty much? Saturday was also served by the um, by the New York Central on your snowshoe. So that line is, oh, yeah. a, is a rail trail yeah. as well. There's another section of that uh, over near Coburn that you can uh, bike walk. I'd say that's our most uh, active stuff. So yeah, you can see the stones are placed in keystone together to uh, hold up this mountain. So now we're on the eastern side of the tunnel. So we're heading toward Lewisburg. We're heading toward Po Valley and the Seven Mountains. The railroad used to cross Pence Creek right here. Now it's just a footbridge. There would have been a more substantial railroad bridge. See some of the railroad ties right here. So it goes from like here to here. So we just came out of the east side of the Coburn Tunnel and this would have been a railroad bridge. You can see the, the abutment here as we're going over. And would have carried the, the weight of those locomotives and those rail cars. So from the railroad bridge over Penn's Creek, if there wasn't all this brush in the way, you could also see right in to the tunnel on the east side. But hey, this is hidden Happy Valley. And to find those hidden parts, we'll need to think outside the box. That's where our good friend Zachary Chambers of the David House comes in. He'll be taking us to see some of those forgotten tunnels in a more mountaintop friendly way. Hey, we're back with Zach and Snowshoe. Zach, you gonna take us on an adventure today? Uh, yes, I am. We're gonna ride out the uh, old New York Central Railroad line and uh, down to Bloody Skill Trailhead and the Snowshoe Rails Trails. We're gonna experience railroad history. Yes, indeed, two tunnels and a bridge. We're gonna go rip on an adventure. So far so good. Some bumps, some splashes, but we're all in one piece. And we're not even halfway there yet. You can see the curve of this tunnel. This is important for any adventure. Snack. It always tricks us into hiking. We're at the Peel Tunnel, right? Yep. Snowshoe rails to trail. Yep. It's been an fun. It's been an adventure. So what railroad was this? This what was uh, New York Central Railroad. Uh, first, it was owned by the Clearfield Bithmus Coal Company. They right. were the ones that produced the line to haul uh, coal and coke from northward down to Jersey Shore. We saw the Jersey Shore markers yep. over there. So we're about 57 miles from Jersey Shore. Yep. At the Peel Tunnel. On the tracks, yep. That way. Then this line was eventually merged with, uh, and it became Penn Central in the later years. In the Belfont area, all the, the companies that started railroads were, were iron companies, um, iron furnaces and stuff. Yeah. And the companies out here that started the railroads were coal coal companies, you know, right? Mm -hmm. So makes sense. They want that coal. This could go all the way into Clearfield, right? Right over. Yep. It goes, uh, I'm not sure where the line exactly ends yeah. up there, but yeah. Yeah, Clearfield and then south to Phillipsburg. Yeah. And even more south than that. So really, it's one of the Pennsylvania Railroad's main competitors, right? Yeah, oh yeah, back at the time, yeah. Cool. Uh, you know, John Vanderbilt or Vanderbilt owned the New York Central Railroad and he owned most of the rail lines in the country. And obviously he saw a great value in the clay, coke, and uh, coal that was here. This was finished in 1902, this version. The original one was built in the 1880s when we built the railroad. And then 1902, they decided to update it. So this old railroad bridge crosses Machannon Creek into Clearfield County. We're in Center County, and on that side, it's Clearfield County. Why is it important to Preserve history like this. Well, I mean, this is something that's been around since what? The, you know, the 1800s, and uh, and uh, this was a big deal back in the day. This was the main corridor of uh, transportation through the region. We've lost a lot of rail over the years, and uh, it keeps disappearing. 
and organizations like ours preserve this uh, the knowledge that uh, existed back in the day and you know we even have uh, this historical train station that, that's behind you right now it's uh, I, I think it's arguably one of the most beautiful train stations in Pennsylvania and we're very fortunate to have that here in Center County uh, something that we you know we can't we can't let it go it's uh, the history is so rich with the, with the railroad, you wouldn't believe it. Many, many families in the, in the region have ties to the railroad. It was one of the major employers back in the day. The Center Hall Railroad Station is a great example of one that has survived. There were many along these railways. There's plenty of history in Center County that you can enjoy and explore and learn about. And it's our job in the present to keep these stories alive, keep these structures alive where we can, and preserve them for the future. Go to your libraries, go to Sklo Library, go to Center County Libraries, check out books, on the railroad history. And that's one way we can keep it alive is by learning it and also by preserving structures where we can. And it's fun, it's fun exploring. History can be fun. So have fun learning history. It's a little train whistle.